Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. So in the last series of videos, three uh, videos that we put out, uh, we reinstalled the brakes on the Ferguson. The next step is to reinstall the brake linkages and the brake pedals. Um, now in reality, these will have to come off again when we come around to painting the tractor because it's just going to be easier to make sure that we get paint into all the right areas and also onto the back of the some of the brake um, shafts uh, if we remove them. But I thought I needed really to to finish the series and to do, you know, to do it properly and to show you uh, reinstalling the, the pedals and the linkages. It's not it it, it won't take long. It's a, it's a quick job. Uh, but, but obviously when I put the, um, you'll see there are um, pins with cotter pins in them. I won't be um, bending the cotter pins over, I'll be leaving those um, straight so that we can pull them out again easily when it comes time to, to remove everything ready for the painting. This is how we do it. So I thought it would be easier to show you how the linkages and pedals work on the Ferguson. Uh, in doing a diagram rather than trying to show you on the tractor. It's a bit difficult to get everything in the frame uh, when, you're, when you're working at the tractor. So, uh, excuse the, the artwork, it's not, um, it's not the best I've ever done, but it's also not my forte. But if you imagine this is the main body of the tractor, these are the wheels, or at least the brake drums. You've got the cross shaft on either side, which we've been working on quite a bit. Now what we're going to install today are these linkages, the levers, the individual brake pedals, there's one on either side, and then you've got the main brake pedal and another linkage on this side. But the main thing about this whole braking system is that it works off of the central shaft which runs through the tractor. It's actually sitting, basically runs through the bell housing. And it's a solid shaft, so all of this, it all works together. On this end you've got a small splined gear. On this end you've got a larger spline gear and then a corresponding small uh, spline gear. <coughs> Excuse me. Now what happens is your main brake pedal fits onto this larger spline and it's obviously has the corresponding splines in its um, slot as well. And then you have a lever on either side. So this one connects onto the small spline here and this one connects to the small spline on this side. Um, and each of those in turn is connected to a link rod which runs through to the back and acts against this cross shaft that we've been working on. So what happens, if you imagine that, what happens when you press this pedal down, basically into the board, this shaft turns this way and pulls that lever essentially forward and that lever forward, pulling that link arm forward and twisting these two cross shafts at the same time. And that's what gives you your braking action on both, way, both wheels at the same time. And then the only component that's left is your individual brake pedals which are then connected directly to that cross shaft, one on either side. And if those are pushed, it basically only acts on that corresponding cross shaft. So if you press that one, it only breaks this wheel. Obviously if you press that one, it breaks this wheel. And the reason that that doesn't uh, or isn't uh, doesn't activate the other side is because that uh, lever that goes into that um, knuckle that we've been working on in the previous videos, that lever is effectively a floating lever. So the cross shaft can turn independent of this lever, which these cross links, cross rods, sorry, connecting rods connect to, meaning that that cross shaft can activate the brake on that wheel without activating or moving this cross shaft, uh, sorry, this uh, link shaft. So, okay, so we're over here on the, what's effectively the left-hand side of the tractor. And the first thing we need to do is to connect the connecting rod to that lever over there. And it runs all the way through to that lever over there. Now that's the lever that's connected to the shaft which runs through the bell housing. And the reason why we're doing this side first is to get an initial measurement from this lever to this one using that connecting rod. And what that does is it sets the radial setting for that shaft that's going through the bell housing. So it puts that shaft in a particular position 
which is, let's call it comfortable for the distance from here to here based on the length of that connecting rod. So I'm going to start the send and I'll move the camera as we as we go. Now this is connection is very simple. Um, essentially you've just got um, a pin which goes through and then you put a cotter pin on the other side to hold it in place. So hopefully this will go on relatively easily. And we just take a cotter pin, pop it in the other side. Yeah. You may have to squeeze these forks just to get the cotter pin in. Which I just use a glass grip fork just to hold that in. Right, so that's gone in. That pin is now secure. As I said, I'm not going to bend the cotter pin over just yet. We can install the shaft, uh, sorry, the, the pedal for the steering brake, which um, I don't know the exact height that this needs to go yet, and we'll set it up when we set the tractor up for the final time, but for now. I'm just going to pop that on at that sort of height there and hope that that's about right. Again, it doesn't really matter because we'll set it all up later properly. And these are adjustable um, even when you, you know, when you're running the tractor, if, you, if it feels uncomfortable, you want them to be perhaps a little bit low or even perhaps a little bit higher. They're easily adjustable just by loosening this nut and adjusting them. Now, this is just a friction fit on the shaft, so when in operation these need to be reasonably tight so that it will actually operate the brake. So let's move to the front here and get the other side connected. Okay, now this is what I was talking about earlier about you wanting to get this shaft in, or this uh, this shaft that runs through the bell house and get it into a reasonable position. As you can see, that obviously has to line up there. But we know that this shaft is going to move forward when the brake pedal is pressed. So we do want to have the maximum amount of travel available to us so that it's not hitting into the bell housing there when we press the brake pedal because obviously that would minimize the amount of action we've got available to us on the actual brakes or in the brakes. So, I'm sorry I'm sitting in the light here um, but hopefully you can see this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back in one whole turn and see if we can get a reasonable amount of travel on this pedal. So that looks like it might work. What we'll do is go one more, we'll just move this lock nut back. See if we can get another whole turn and still have this line up, which it seems like it will. I'm going to go one more and see if we can push our luck. Right, now what's happening is this threaded bolt inside here is actually preventing that lever from lining up with this hole here. So we're going to have to go back, we'll go back a half turn, see if we can get it to line up, which looks like it's going to restrict it, so we'll go another half turn. Right, I think that that's about where I want to try it. And again, it's the same story, a pin through here. Okay. Right, so we're still too far in, so we're going to go out another half turn and see. Yeah, there we go. I think that that's. So that's going to sit in there nicely. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is when this moves forward.
if it's if this lever is going to hit on that threaded bar, which it feels like it might. But we'll go with that for now. If it becomes a problem, it's really easy to pop this off and just adjust that out again. Okay, now on this side, you recall we spoke about that shaft that comes through the bell housing. It has a large spline and a small spline. So the first thing that we want to do is get the brake pedal on, which is here. And you'll see that this is splined inside as well. Hopefully you can see that. Now, when I took this off, I did actually put two witness marks on the end of the shaft. You'll see there's one point in this way and one point in that way. Now, if I remember correctly, this one corresponds to this brake shaft to this slot. So what we want to do is try and get this brake shaft on so that it's it doesn't look like it's quite going to line up but so that would be lined up there. I think things have moved so what I'm going to do is move that for now up as far as the brake pedal will go which is about there Now the shaft is moving back through the bell housing, so we do need to, to try and hold it. There we go. So that pedal is now as high as it'll go. Obviously on the shaft as much as it'll go. The shaft is pulled back this way. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, as I say, my witness mark is there and my slot is there. So it looks like I've moved two teeth, maybe one, maybe two teeth up a bit. Things have changed. We've um, obviously loosened, uh, loosened up the linkages. We've reset the brakes. Um, we've adjusted the brakes. So that might um, explain that movement there but let's keep going and see how we see how we go so the first thing we want to do is pop the bolt in here which holds which you use to tighten this down and clamp it onto the shaft okay okay the next job would be to put the lever on here which is this one and again, I've got my witness mark, which is there, which suggests that that would need to go on like that. We'll see in a minute whether that's right or not. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect, put the connecting rod in and see whether that sits in about the right place. So, okay, we move to the back now. What we'll do is we'll get this linkage, this connecting arm, get that installed. Whilst we're here, let's connect or put this um, brake pedal on as well. That one fits on nice and easily. Sorry, I'm in front of the camera. I'll try and stay out of the way. Okay, that's reasonably tight. You can hear the brake engaging there. Great. Now we'll uh, move back to the front. Okay, now, same story. We want to bring this linkage in and connect it to this lever. But, as you can see, that's quite a long way off. We can undo this lever further around. It's probably only one or two teeth will do it. Just open this up again and that will come off reasonably easily. And then very carefully I'm going to move it back one tooth, which is there. Now we can see that that actually needs to be extended a bit. That's more like it. So now I think we'll get our pin in there. 
maybe with a little bit of encouragement required. Let's just take that in one more, or half a turn. There we go. Right, so look, I'm happy with that. So we can take this screwdriver out now. We can make sure that that's on properly. Again, there's a bolt that goes through here. Okay, let's start. So that's all the pedals and all the linkages installed. So we can see now when I press on the brake pedal, let me come around this side, you can see that linkage moving there. And that's obviously turning the shaft which runs through the bell housing. What's also happening at the back here, I'll show you, is it's pulling that linkage there. And that in turn is twisting this cross shaft and activating the brake. If I now press on the individual brake, we see that the cross shaft activates but the linkage doesn't really. There's a small amount of movement there, but not enough to activate the other side. Now what I'm going to do is, you can see that I can turn this wheel with some ease, and then it turns. If I apply the brake, the main brake pedal, I can put all my weight on that and it won't move. Similarly, Again, it does move. Now if I apply my way to the individual brake pedal, again, that's activated and it won't, won't move. Well, there you go. Um, again, I don't know how well that's come out on camera. Um, I'm hoping when I'm editing it that I'll be able to um, enhance some of the areas to, to make, it, make it more understandable. Look, it's relatively, well, it's relatively straightforward, it's just a little bit fiddly, it's just about getting all those linkages and those um, pedals, those um, arms in the right place. Ultimately what you're looking for is you want the pedal to be as high as possible at rest, um, but you want the linkages and everything to be set in such a way that as soon as you start to apply pressure to that, pre to that pedal, that it begins pretty much immediately to start activating or acting on the brakes. Uh, but at the same time, when it's at rest, you don't, you don't want any pressure on the brakes whatsoever. So it's just about finding that right balance between it being engaged and about to be engaged. Um, and again, on an old tractor like this, it's never going to be perfect, I don't think. Uh, but at the same time, I think we're, we're pretty much there. I think with uh, a little bit of adjusting of the actual brakes themselves, once we get that done, I think we'll have a much better a much better setup there. And it might be that we need to adjust one or both of those connecting or, uh, rods, the, the length of those again, to um, to make sure that we're not, or really to make sure that they're balanced. Um, you don't want one side acting uh, more aggressively than the other. So we need to make sure that we've got an equal or as equal as possible amount of free movement and play on each side, but that they also both are literally on the verge of, of engaging. So more to do on that basically, but we'll do that when we when we're ready to do the final when we do the final setup of the tractor, which will be right at the end of the restoration. So um, a long way away. Um, <clears throat> One other thing I do want to just uh, mention, I want to just welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. We've had a number of new uh, people subscribe in the last two weeks. Uh, welcome, thanks for, thanks for joining and uh, hope that you are and that you will get um, both some enjoyment and hopefully a little bit of uh, learning out of, out of the channel as well. We enjoy making the videos, we do it uh, primarily to video catalogue 
this restoration. That's our, our primary objective with this um, series of videos. We do do videos on other topics from time to time as well. And they're mostly just for interest's sake, if anybody is interested in some of the other stuff that we get up to here at Waterhouse Ford. So again, welcome, thanks for joining, and um, if you know anybody else who has a similar interest to yourself, please do pass on uh, the details of the channel to them and ask them to subscribe as well. Uh, we're looking forward to welcoming more and more subscribers as we go. Another important thing, obviously, is whilst we are cataloguing what we're doing, and we're doing it in a certain sequence, and that sequence is determined partly by logic in terms of what comes after the next, you know, what comes, come, what comes next after doing a particular job. Uh, also partly by budget, obviously we, you know, this is an expensive hobby, as uh, any of you who do this will know and understand. And uh, we do have to um, plan the jobs according to, to the available budget. But saying that, if there are any suggestions, if there are any areas that anybody would like more information on, if, if there's sp uh, specific topics that you'd like us to cover, it, we will, you know, please add them to the comments. We, we, like, we read and we try to respond to pretty much every comment. Um, and if it's possible, then we will make an effort to, to, um, to cover those topics if we can. Uh, but also just provides us with some guidance on the type of thing that people would be interested in seeing and helps us therefore to plan accordingly. So, yeah, uh, drop us a line, uh, let us know. Um, check out our website as well, uh, uh, waterhouseford.co.uk. Waterhouse Ford is all one word. Um, we also have a Facebook page, so again, um, you, know, you can like us, uh, connect with us on Facebook. And uh, yeah, that's about it for now. I think the next job uh, and the next video will be on reconditioning the leveling box for the lift arm. Um, we're not going to reinstall the lift arms at this stage. Um, they're just going to get in the way while we're working on the tractor and doing other things. Also, when it comes time to painting, I'd rather paint them separately and not on the tractor. Um, so we're not going to do that. That's a, a, a although we've got a few, we've got the check chains and all of that for for reinstalling them. I don't see the point of putting them on at this stage. But um, the restoration of the self leveling box. Not the self, sorry, the leveling box, not self leveling, the leveling box. Um, that's an interesting uh, little job, and again, we've got the bits for that, so I, I think that'll probably be the next video. And that'll be hopefully in the next two days, I would think. Uh, we'll get into that and show you how to do it. It's relatively easy. Um, I think people might be tempted if they're having a problem with their leveling box to just go out and buy a new one because they are available, you can buy the whole unit. Um, but actually restoring them, um, just opening them up, changing the seals, changing the bearing, uh, obviously checking the gears, that kind of thing. It's not, it's not a difficult job and, and, and I would encourage anybody to have a go. Um, it's also not an exp they're not expensive parts, so um, certainly a lot cheaper than buying a new leveling box. So that's it for now. Um, hope that you've enjoyed that. hope that this uh, continues to, um, to interest you and we look forward to um, seeing you on the next video. Have a great weekend, everyone. Cheers for now.